Aujourd'hui, Lucius va monter sur le ring pour affronter le public. En musique, bien sûr. Avant le moment décisif, je les accueille dans les vestiaires. Un moment d'intimité pour mieux connaître leur histoire et leurs rêves. Dans un même temps, je vais les coacher, les chauffer à blanc, jusqu'à leur monter sur scène, sous le pinceau de Charles Berberian, qui va peindre l'affiche de cet événement. Attention, Lucius et leur pop gracieuse, venue tout droit de Brooklyn, rentrent dans l'arène musicale. Lucius est une jolie bande de Brooklyn dont le noyau dur est composé par deux chanteuses, Holly et Jess, deux amies qui se sont rencontrées sur les bancs du Berkeley College of Music, célèbre école de musique, où sont entre autres passés euh, des artistes comme Diana Kroll, Kiss Jarrett ou encore Quincy Jones. On a pu découvrir les sublimes harmonies vocales de Lucius en 2013 lors de la sortie de leur premier album, Wild Woman, aux états unis Un album qui arrive enfin chez nous, en France. Lucius. Welcome on the ring. Thank Bienvenue you. dans l'arène musicale. How are you? Great. Yes. I just said that you were uh, friends, but actually you're like sisters, like twins. Yeah. Who's yes. Holly? Jess. Jess and oh, Holly. Holly. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Aline. Uh, so we're going to talk about your first album, Wild Woman. It's already already out here in France. Rolling Stones said that you are the band that everybody should listen to at the moment. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, as I said, you look like like twins. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, like a conceptual thing that you wanted to to do really uh, with with your music, yeah. like the the fashion style and the music? Yeah, we grew up listening to artists who had a very strong visual representation of their music, and I think it was important for us because we sing together in unison, like one voice. Um, that we painted a picture that uh, represented that. So on stage, when you see the band, you see one unit. You don't see, um, you know, individuals. And yeah. I think that helps us to connect and it helps for other people to connect. Actually, you are five huh, in the band. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to discover your influences through this cube. So who's the first to wear it, to take it? Oh, jeez. All right. So if I flip, does she answer the question? <laughs> you could do both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like I should close share. my eyes and... Uh... Mr. Pierre Cardin. Well, maybe for obvious reasons, but uh, he was somebody who took geometry and brought it to the, um, the body. And I think that's something that we've always been intrigued by, just having um, so much symmetry in our music and symmetry in our um, visual. Yeah. And uh, he was one of the pioneers of this sort of aesthetic. Is that Pierre Cardin you're wearing no. today? <laughs> no. Another picture, maybe? Sure. Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Yeah, your hometown, yes. your home uh, neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we came from different parts of the States, but we all ended up in Brooklyn, and that's where we reside now. Yeah. And uh, it was a big influence for us moving there because of the energy that it brings. And I think that kind of reflected in, into our music. You know, when we, when we first arrived, we were doing softer music. And uh, just to keep up with the pace of the city, we, we wanted to rock out a little more. And, yeah. um, and so it definitely There's became an influence. Constant pulse in what everybody does and this rhythmic, um, you know, this rhythmic pulse. So um, I think that's definitely had a huge effect on our writing and, um, and on the way that we even just listen to music and approach it. And you collaborate maybe with uh, some guys from uh, Brooklyn, Jay-Z? We or are. <laughs> For oh, yeah, just tell, just tell Jay-Z yeah, no, to yeah. give us a call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we all did meet in Brooklyn. Um, we met in Boston, but uh, when we met the guys, it was where we met, made our first record, and so um, it was really a special place because it's home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another one? Uh, oh. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> Every time we make a music video, we think, maybe we can call up Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> Why this, this uh, um, Because he, he has this very um, retro sensibility and creepy sensibility and very colorful and bold. And so it's kind of everything we've talked about 
mm -hmm. kind of all together in um, in what he does and humor. And music is very important and very, in his and the music, work. yeah. So, um, and actually, when we were writing our song "Turn It Around," it felt like he was very strongly imprinted in our brains. So, oh, really? Yeah, just there's a sexiness to what he does, and at the same time, it's incredibly gory. So, mm -hmm. yeah. what is your favorite mo movie from uh, Quentin Tarantino? <sighs> If you could name one. Mm, well, I guess who is your dog named after? Oh, Lucius. Yeah, I mean, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Lucius was named after um, my dog. Who was named after Lucius from the movie Pulp Fiction? Pulp Fiction. Yeah. So I guess I have to say Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, there's a last one. Another, the last picture is I help you, huh? Yeah. Usually I do. Oh. I don't do it. But <laughs> Thank you. Phil Spector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the wall of sound plays a huge part in what we do um, as a band, and Danny, our Uh, drummer and also he uh, he's an engineer and producer he's kind of the one who really brought this sort of wall of sound idea into the band um, yeah. the way that he treated vocals and the way that he conceptualized uh, arrangements um, is something that was revolutionary at the time and um, it's something that's so iconic Yeah, no. still today. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me introduce you to our paint, okay. Mr. Okay. Charles Berberian. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Lucius Charles. And nice Charles is you. doing right now the pictures for the ring you're gonna do it for us tonight. Cool. Awesome. I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, Lucius, it's now the time for us to discover your playlist. Um, as you share everything, you're going to share that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's begin by the first track. Uh, the first track we chose was Sam Cooke, Bring It On Home To Me. He's, we were really inspired by artists, uh, old school soul yeah. artists. Um, we both grew up listening to a lot of those songs, Sam Cooke and Otis Redding and Marvin Gaye. And, Um, with our dads and in the car. Uh, legends. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular song is just one that always stands out to me. It's so beautiful and soulful, and um, yeah, I just love it. Cool. Another track? Um, well, Tune Yards, we wanted to include a new artist in, um, in our playlist, and she comes from California and has an incredible voice and has a lot of African uh, influence in her music, um, but it's still pop music. Yeah, roots and, and pop at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, the percussive elements, and um, Holly and I, we actually studied music in Ghana, West Africa. Yeah. So as soon as we heard her music, it struck a chord with us because we it resonated. Um, the way she uses her voice and the way she Um, writes her melodies and incorporates um, group vocals and percussion. Um, it's really rich. It's, yeah, it's I mean, and so yeah. energetic. Yeah, and she's just fierce as a woman in the in the music world. It's really um, amazing to see somebody who's so strong. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the last one we chose was uh, Bjork and it was Hidden Place, and that was another song that we had sung together uh, when we first started working together, and it's just so, her arrangements are so lush, and she's another person that's just so eccentric and, and willing to just try so many things and go way out there and, um, and have no shame, and She like uh, yeah, incorporates yeah. all her senses into her music. And yeah, like her music's very visual and like you can feel it and almost taste it and it's really cool. But I, I really respect her as an arranger uh, composer. Um, she's great. She's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we wrote this record about eight years ago. And uh, it was when we first met and started writing together. And it's just something that we've sort of 
after we ran out of copies, we just decided that we were going to let it be in the past. And um, when we met our new bandmates, we thought it was the real beginning to our band, and uh, we just wanted to move forward. So it will remain a mystery. We're very mysterious, I guess. And, um, but you, we hope you'll forgive us. Um, and our common dream is that we would like to maintain um, being artists for the rest of our life and um, doing music. And that's what we're doing now, and we plan to continue. Yeah. Um, well, whenever we're coming to France, the first thing we talk about is the food. <laughs> When do we arrive? When do we get to eat? When will we have cheese? When will we have, we have wine? Um, and so we love that about France. And uh, the audience has been so good to us. 